Okay, so this is part two of the fifth sec uh, session, Probabilistic Models for Discriminatory uh, Classification. In this part, we're going to talk about um, how to optimize the those functions that are not uh, or that do not have um, a closed form, right? So our way to do optimization over here is um, through gradient descent, okay? So that's why we want to, to have that gradient so we are able to to use it and to and to do the, 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 the search basically. So what we will do is like I'm going to just call uh, theta our set of parameters and we are going to iteratively um, search for them and based on a previous step of that iteration we are going to uh, walk in the in the in the steepest part using some uh, learning rate. I'm just going to call it lambda. So this lambda, in general, it may be fixed, in, it may change. So for general purposes, like let's just call it uh, lambda k. That means like we have a particular lambda for each iteration, and times our gradient, and again also a gradient that that may go for the k step. And basically, this gradient is uh, just a function that depends on on the parameters and also depends on the data that we have. So it may depend on, in, on X and Y. And this is our base, our basic framework for optimization, right? So like this is the normal gradient descent that you have, like this is the vanilla stuff. And then by changing this lambda, uh, you get different, different flavors of, of, <clears throat> of the, of the gradient descent. And, and then newer methods that we have, they are based on how to estimate that particular learning rate, or by changing uh, the shape of the gradient if you are if you are interested in that, but basically they are just approximations of, of uh, Taylor series, right? And using that, you just get a, a, a set of of, of, of values. Um, in this case, we're assuming that we have all the data here, and that we're computing this gradient every every single time for the whole set of, of data that we have available. There is a, a different um, flavor of this, it's called stochastic, stochastic uh, gradient descent. And that thing basically just says, why instead of taking the whole data set over here, why don't you take just a small part of it? And just like, if we go to the limit, we will just go and search for one particular random sample over here. And what I'm going to do is just like repeat the same the same shape, but my gradient instead of being this accumulated one over the whole data set is just going to take one particular instance of this xi and yi. So I'm just taking one instance. I will just pick it at random. They perform this optimization k k different times, and I will just move around and, and perform this over and over and over again. Um, this should be uh, evaluated at the k. Uh, at the key uh, step, right? Like one, one step before. And then like, you may ask like, why? Okay, if I'm passing just one random sample here, why don't I pass a set of samples? And you can also do it. And that is called a mini batch green descent. So um, basically you just select um, a set of these uh, data, data points. And then you just use them to, to train this thing. Um, this is the K, lambda K gk, theta k, and then instead of just a single i, just pass a set of these. Okay, so I'm just going to use this column notation. And um, basically you're just sending this um, set of x's and set of y's that you just select. And this can be uh, iteratively through your data set. This can be random samples, like whatever you want to construct them, it will give you different flavors. Um, this is like the, the mini batch bridging descent that, that it is normally used these days in, in neural networks, right? So now when we start thinking about how do you select this lambda key, you can also get a different one. And there is the momentum base, the momentum base um, mm -hmm. learning. And this momentum base, what it does is that it just takes um, the velocity of how quickly, like the velocity of the learning Right? Like how quickly are you moving through that optimization space? And then it uses this uh, to, to, 
improve the, the parameter. So you introduce this new term. So now you have a velocity term in for every iteration. And that velocity term is basically um, just the momentum of your previous velocity. So how much of the previous uh, speed that you gain are you going to use? So like that is like the, the, the metaphor here, right? And then you're going to use some learning rate still, but now the learning rate is not over the parameter, but over the velocity that you have. And then your gradient is going to be used in this particular uh, step. So I'm just going to take that K over here and maybe simplify a little bit this notation. So now you're still using this lambda here, but then now your, uh, your parameter is basically the previous one that you had minus the this this velocity, right? So notice that we just move the 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 sign over here, right? So this will be your your k plus one velocity. So you depending on how you want to compute it, you you have the the previous one, then you update this, and then this is the one that you use minus the previous one to to update your momentum base. Normally, this um, gamma over here is set to 0.9, just because it works experimentally. But it, that will depend basically on on, on on what experiments are you are you doing, right? Now we have the nestor of uh, accelerated gradient that is the, the next iteration of these things over here. So let me just write that for you. The nestor of uh, accelerated gradient. Or, or uh, now is the, like the acronym will be right. Um, so basically, the problem in here is like you will just shoot out because imagine like if you're just going downhill, you are going to shoot out the, the your optimization, right? Like if you're if this is the, the the shape of your of your function, then you're going to gain speed and at some point you're going to shoot out and just pass this and continue over here, right? And then you will just keep kind of oscillating here until you reach this particular minimum over here. So the idea of the nestor of accelerated green is what if I have a look ahead? What if I have some kind of uh, oracle that let me uh, see one step in the future instead of just random, uh, blindly moving toward the, that, that goal right, right there. So what they introduce is like, they still use this momentum-based optimization here. They still use some previous accelerate uh, velocity, but now the gradient, instead of being computed at this particular time step, they just move one time step to the front. So they have this learning rate and what is our, our, our time step, right? Like, what if I use my previous velocity to just continue one, one tick ahead? And for, to do that, they just take the, the, the parameter, but instead of computing in, in this one, right? Like, they just go and move one, one tick ahead by using the previous velocity. So this is a look ahead. They are just looking in the future of the gradient and using the future to, to update your method. So if your future says like, you see, you're going up, then you should update less instead of just shooting, shooting uh, through that particular uh, curve over there. And then you just do the, the, the update of the, of the parameters in the same way. And yeah, so that is um, the, the momentum-based methods that we had. And after those things, um, another idea came, came out, and this is the, the adaptive gradient, the adagrad. And adagrad comes from a different perspective. Why I'm using the same uh, update rate for all the parameters in, in my vector, right? Maybe they won't be as frequent, or maybe they are not as, uh, as important for the problem, or they don't move in the same speed. And now the thing is, why why I don't have this lambda just um, act on each of those features in a different way, and that's why they introduce. So they introduce some some lambda i per per um, per feature such that uh, they want to have fe uh, features that are really frequent to be updated less because they appear more, and features that are uh, very, very infrequent to be updated with a high learning rate because they don't appear as much. So basically we want to update inversely proportional to the frequency of the, of the features that we have over here. Um, what they propose is just to then have this um, parameter, but then just index it by the, by the i, i th feature, right? So 
basically it's the same idea, just that I'm going to be working feature-wise now in, in the in the parameter space. And then I will have the cave I over here too. Um, basically they just, just they just go and like do the same thing just parameter parameter wise, right? And interestingly, they also uh, introduced some shape of this uh, Lambda KI. And basically what they said is like, you know, like this, this thing over here can be a fixed Lambda. And we just um, weighted by the, by this GK II matrix. This is just a diagonal matrix. And then we just add some noise to avoid division by zero over here. And this GI I matrix over here is, uh, the diagonal, oh, okay, I'm running out of space over here. The diagonal um, of the summation of the gradients from the previous uh, iteration. So basically, I'm just going through all my previous iterations from k equal to one up to now. And then I'm just adding those k iterations feature wise. And I'm just doing the square of that. Okay, so basically, I'm just adding everything up here, all the errors that I have, and then just taking the, the square. So I'm just doing the 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 roots of the means uh, of the sum squares here. And then you just just uh, define some lambda. Normally this is going to be around 0 0.01 in the, in the original proposal. So this, this kind of works better, uh, but it's still, they, 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 it has some, some issues, right? Because it has some uh, drastic monotonically decreasing lambda. And to solve that, we have ADA delta. And ADA delta was introduced as a way of, of solving that particular issue. So ADA delta is just a method that, that tries to, to solve that by, by changing the way in which uh, we compute this, this penalization term over here. So they say, like, instead of using the whole uh, history of the greenies. Why don't you just a running average to try to mitigate that that particular uh, aggressiveness? So they they say like, why don't we compute this expected greenies square for a particular k plus one? As instead of doing the whole operation over there, I'm just going to do uh, an online uh, update. So this is uh, some gamma. Like this is a different gamma from the momentum. Okay. Don't, don't confuse it. Um, this is just an online update of this. So it is my previous one plus one minus gamma of my current gradient square. So it is just a, a, a normal uh, gradient update. So they have an online mean over here. Uh, and then they want to define this, this particular thing and, and use it. They define uh, what they call the RMS uh, of this delta theta over here of, with respect of k, then as the as the square root of this expected value of that parameter delta theta uh, for the k iteration plus some noise to avoid division by zero. This is a small value, okay? And this delta k uh, at, at some particular uh, iteration is going to be defined, this is kind of recursive, but it is the same thing, as the RMS of G in the case iteration times my gradient, okay? So basically they are just taking this square uh, operation of the expected value and this expected value is just the, the running mean of that. And they compute that as, as the delta, the difference, how my, my parameter is changing. And then what I do is that instead of simply using these by a fixed value over here, they use the RMS from the previous step to improve that, that computation. So finally, my, my theta k plus one is nothing else but the theta k minus the RMS of the previous step, you know, like the delta, uh, delta theta of k minus one. And then I use the RMS of the current one, the delta theta of k. And this is this, the same idea over here, right? Like I'm just computing that ratio. And this is what, what makes it uh, less aggressive times the gk that I, that I have. And there is like, this is the, the, the same idea of the RMS prop that, that wasn't published, but 
like it was proposed from 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 here like i can use the same the same idea without the the previous step that is basically just using these and that is what we call the the rms prop like these root mean square um propagation over here so it, it is like another delta minus the the weighting of the rms from a previous step and then you use the rms of the current one okay and these methods are kind of really really related and they are used a lot to to try to solve some issues and now the, the 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 following idea will be like okay cool we have now some way of of doing this learning rate but what about the momentum right like we just left it out so we can just try to put that momentum back again and that is what adam does so adam is just adding this um the kind of average moment uh, as momentum to this uh, adaptation of the of the particular lambdas and uh, what they did is just to define some some first and second moments and then use those as estimates and use those to to do the update of the in the rms prop here so they define the first momentum as mk plus one and again in my k plus one iteration as and they have these beta parameters to to tune it um and again it's just the average uh, the online average, so it's the same idea of these, right? So this is the, the estimation of the, it's an estimate of the first moment of the gradients. And then I can do the same thing for the second moment, like, and they just call it like a, a velocity, right? And they have, again, a, a different parameter they need to, to tune, a BK plus, again, it's just a weighted, a weighted average of those kind of things. And this is the second moment, so this is my, my grand square, right? So this is the estimation of the, of the second moment. And now they can use it. Um, so since this will be uh, initialized in zeros, you need to do some estimation to avoid some bias. So what they do is like this, they introduce these estimates from mk plus one as mk over uh, one minus the parameter that they are using in the kth, uh, in the kth iteration, in case you are changing it. And these, they do the same thing for the velocity, my second one. That is basically the the estimate of the of the previous one. Oh, sorry, this should be mk bk minus uh, beta two in the kth iteration, right? So everything should be from the same from the same iteration. And then they just use uh, Hermes prop to update these beta one and beta two. And once they have those those estimates, they can simply apply. Uh, the operation that, that we know and love as the optimization here. So basically they just do the lambda over uh, the estimate of the second moment. So the root of the BK here um, plus some epsilon to avoid division by zero times the estimate of the first moment. And that is the the, the method that, that we use for, for Adam, right? And then if we continue, um, there is a, a, a different like branch of methods, if you want to call it like that. Um, what they do is to use the L norm of the gradient instead of just taking the L2 norms, because you can think of these, this particular operation over here as uh, in, in, the, in the second moment as, as an L2 norm of the gradient, right? What if we take this L2 norm to the maximum? So the idea of Adam Max is why I don't generalize this L2 norm to an L infinity. So they define this Adam Max and then they try to do something like, I'm going to take this L2 norm and, and, and push it to an L infinity over here. So what they do is that basically they just define again, this momentum based estimates and they have these beta uh, parameter here in the to the pth uh, norm in the general case 
and this is just again the weighted update of my of my parameter uh, sorry this is the g k up to the p and this is this should be the, the, the p norm right and the cases like this p norm may be unstable so they want to push it to uh, to an l max and in that case what will happen is that when you have this p to the to the uh infinity this just become a maximum operation right so let's just call it u for for the time being basically you want to take this infinity over here b or uk sorry plus one minus beta two infinity of the green in here and this green in k i just want to push it to the l infinity so this is equivalent to just taking the maximum value between my b2 bk and my gradient over here and basically just taking the absolute value of this and by doing that i can just take this uh, this estimate and then my uh parameter just updated as a theta k minus again some learning rate that i just push and this l infinity estimate times my mk and this mk is the same thing that we define in in adam over there and you can also push the idea of checking into the future and pushing the idea of this nestor of accelerated gradient into this um, Adam, Adam estimate. And you have the, uh, what they call Adam, that is basically nestor of, a nestor of Adam, okay? So it's just Adam plus nag, the thing that we had before, Adam plus then instead of one that we had at the beginning. And what they did at the end then is like, you have this update rule in which you use the same idea of, um, of Adam. So you have the theta k minus some lambda over the, your estimate over the bk plus some noise to our division by zero. And then you multiply and then you look ahead so you, this is your your estimate, and then you do some weighted weighted average with respect of the g k that you have. Okay, and this estimate over here is just my common one, just to fix with respect to the bias. So yeah, those are the common methods that we have these days to, to do some great and decent. As you see, they have, they just follow a line of, of different possibilities. So you may decide what you want to use later on.